All right, let's start with part two. The other five stocks of our 10 European stock analysis, you can find the link to the vid first video in the description below that we did yesterday. So let's immediately start. A very interesting company, Just Eat Takeaway, that was really, really in the news also by acquiring Grubhub and everything. So let's look into it. The system is to be a platform for delivery between the producer, the restaurant and the customer, plus then scale on that all. They have a good position in good markets, so Europe and North America, especially after the Grubhub acquisition. They also own part of eFoods, I think, in Brazil, which again, some say it's of immense value. And we can see here that most of the traffic comes from UK, Europe, and of course, together, North America, and then again, Southern Europe, a little bit less. Maybe we prefer to go out to get our dinner, but that's something different. And then we see here the acquisition of Grubhub, what they did, merger, merger, we just did takeaway. So really trying to reach that scale because that scale seems to work. So the stickiness of the customer is there. So they buy more, more and more. So that is working well. And therefore they assume highly predictable revenues from the customer base year over year. They also look at the market and they see a huge market estimated there at 1.1 trillion where they have 28 billion of that now. So we'll see whether they are correct there, but they are growing extremely fast given all their merger. So really also issuing shares to do that. But when it comes to growth stock, there is one thing that's very important. This is a business model that loses money hand over fist. And I always say it's easy to grow by losing money. That's the key. And if you look also at the cash flows, those are pretty, pretty negative. Amazon did grow by losing money, but the cash flows were always very, very positive. That's the difference in the business model. So the key here is, of course, scale. Will they reach? When will they reach scale? And that's the difficult part with such an analysis. And also I analyzed it for my research platform. Here again, stock overview, and they state a clear path to a EBITDA margins of 5%. So really clear growth that that didn't happen. This was still in 2011 when the tech sector was booming. But I said that the businesses, business model is uncertain. The company can grow, but if they lose money with all stock acquisitions, the dilution will be significant and the current loss making business and focus on reaching scale might not work as planned. And that's the risk and reward of the companies. And therefore, it's simply not for me. Anything can happen. When you look at this stock price, it looks really, really incredible. Now it's much lower than what, when it was in 2016 and it was at crazy highs, 109 and now we are down 84% and then everyone thinks, okay, there must be value, there must be value. And yes, when you look at the market cap of 3.7 billion, Grubhub acquired for 7.5, takeaway also. So really, if you look at the value of just iFoods or something, then you might think, okay, that's immense value. But keep in mind something when it comes to value. Value sends cash flows to your pocket. If there is no such thing, then the value might actually be zero. Yes, scale. Yes, this. Yes, that. Maybe Apple can acquire them, but if there is real value, they will do it. So they are a takeover candidate. Somebody will take them private. You might get 40-50% on top of the current price if somebody does that because of the scale, because of the customers, because of everything. But that's again a bet. Maybe they will let it bleed lower and lower because the business model simply isn't sustainable. And with the loss, as we see, that's also the risk. So given that the liquidity for such crazy tech gambles has disappeared over the last six months, that's also what you see reflected in the stock price. No matter the stock price, nobody wants it or nobody has three, four, five billion to make a bet on something like this now, which sounds incredible, but just a year ago, everyone had that money of 50, 60 specs, whatever, 
to do that. That was easy to find money. Now it's completely different. And this is what happened when the growth story doesn't materialize. Now let's discuss a completely different business, Peter Lynch style business, boring as hell. So ISS is a Danish European cleaning company. So they do cleaning food services for companies, other things, and they thus have office-based and non-office-based customers. If you look at what they do they have, I don't know, in the UK, production-based customer, pharmaceuticals, Hewlett-Packard, and such companies that need to outsource the cleaning, the everything, the cleaning products. And they had some bad years. They had a stellar performance over the last decade, but then they made some crazy acquisitions and that lowered their high free cash flows, but they hope to return to previous free cash flows. The debt is also an issue. They are working now hard to lower that debt and turn it around to below three times. If they can do that, if they can lower the debt ratio and increase the EBITDA, of course, then it already looks very, very interesting, especially from a cash flow perspective. If they can hit higher operating margins like it was the case before 2019. If you look at the geography, most is really focused on Europe. So if there are issues in the economy, all these companies stopping outsourcing things, less cleaning, less this, then it is really, really an issue as 48% of the support is cleaning, then technical, a little bit less food and other related to workplace. If they can reach these free cash flows of 2.2 billion Danish kroners, then you can see here that that is a 10% yield on the current stock price. If you look at the stock price, it is extremely low also compared to the IPO recently. So that is the valuation. If they can reach 10%, 12% and then keep growing as the sector of cleaning consolidates, that might be an interesting story. For me, it is still a very interesting thing. I found this in a value fund, but still a little bit too Ah, maybe a little bit too much Peter Lynch. You want to see those businesses grow, scale, also grow here, and then constantly improve things. This looks okay-ish, but it's more a valuation bet, and I don't like these valuation bets. Now, very much requested, Vonovia the G German residential home holder. If you look at Vonovia, it has been staggering over the last decade because the company took out cheap debt, zero low interest rate from the ECB, and then bought homes and rented it out at 3 4%. So if you borrow at zero, rent out at 3%, 4%, you are the genius in the house. That's clear. And consequently, also the stock price did remarkably. So really everything exploded and 226% return plus a huge dividend. So really, really great. And I received a lot, a lot of requests here about the stock price. Uh, and yes, it was always interesting, but I knew that at some point the party has to revert. And then what? Then what? Well, then comes value investing, then comes real investing to the table. When you understand also these profits and everything, everything is based on revaluations first, and therefore you have to focus on the real free funds from operations. But let me explain revaluations first. If you look at how property is valued, if you have a cap rate, your return, let's say from real estate, and you want 5%, 50,000 yearly income on a property of 1 million. If that required rate goes to 6%, your value of a property is 833,000. So you lose three years of income in just one percentage point increase. If this doubles to 10%, the value of the property is 500,000. That's one issue with real estate. And you can see here how much debt does Vonovia have refinancing issues of three, four billion per year over the next, what is it, seven, eight years. Of course, now this 
bonds are very very low grade but the grade the interest rate should go up over time and they smartly said that they will not increase debt levels for growth as they say they will fund with retained earnings after the dividend and the recurring cash sales the plan is for the free funds from operations to keep the dividend there so that should be good and then other things to reinvest for growth organically so that is smart and of course if you can't play the game you change the game that's also something but keep in mind also with inflation what happens with inflation if there is inflation you can increase rents so that is also real estate on the other hand if you go now build all that they own it would be an incredible cost to build that plus you can increase the rents alongside inflation so there is some protection from that cap rate going higher of course they changed the priorities as the increased cost of capital and we have now to value this how does it go when it comes to valuation if we look at the market cap it's 25 billion the dividend yield is 5.23 percent if they can keep this dividend that's around 1 billion 1 billion something they still have some room left for growth and reinvestments but with their huge debt pile if that debt pile and cost goes higher and they do not manage to increase their rents enough also keep in mind their costs are also going higher they have some costs that's what the market is pricing in so the market is looking at this looking at the debt and saying ah it becomes risky so that's something that becomes risky and this is unfortunately a reversion of the bet borrow as much as you can for growth we discussed brookfield a while ago what happens when this reverts well here you see what happens when it reverts and that looks significantly ugly so higher interest rates higher dividend yields it looks interesting but again nothing spectacular that you will say now okay this is really crazy if interest rates go to zero then the dividend yield will go lower and the stock will go back but interest rates are going higher and that's the name on of the game i don't think the company will go bust but you never know how these things will evolve over the long term so i sense some risk so for now i would not touch it despite the stock price another very requested stock is a company that has a moat and that are stock exchanges if we look at the performance of stock exchange stocks really really great euronext did amazingly uh, london stock exchange and all the others so if you look at what they have they really are the leading position in europe when it comes to stock exchanges but they also depend on new listings on the tech companies listing on whatever goes around with a stock exchange which is something you have to keep in mind but they expect to grow five to six percent per year so that is a positive invest something and also pay out a dividend 50 percent of reported net income however this is something we have to keep in mind this was really a boom here they made some acquisitions so really growing but they also paid top price in these years to make those acquisitions if i look at the free cash flows those also jumped but on much more shares to dilute shareholders so that's also something let's say that as businesses slow down a little bit let's say they can make 500 million in free cash flows if you look at it here so that's around four or five per share five let's say five euros per share for the free cash flows and if i compare it to the stock price yes it is significantly cheaper than it was but it's still just seven percent and with less trading ahead likely in europe forget about this boom then we are likely to see lower more stable levels over time so this keep in mind this is a lot of ecb printing money and pushing in crazy crazy liquidity now with higher volatility they might make more money but it's usually not the case for them as they depend on volume so it might not be just a growth story ahead and the dividend yield of two percent for slow growth 
let's say the market stabilizes in Europe over the next five years and this exuberance boom reverts to the mean, it's a little bit too, too expensive. Next company, a lot of requests. Of course, chemicals have looked into it and the stock did really, really bad lately. So really, really down significantly, but there are some significant issues despite the huge dividend yield and the price earnings ratio. Of course, it's the chemicals company of Europe, but it depends on input prices. To make all of these things, you need to depend on input prices and it is really focused on Europe and European gas prices have skyrocketed, which means that the costs are extreme here for the company. Look at the additional, the costs, additional costs and additional costs now. This is really, really insane. They can try to do whatever they can, but you cannot manage this 400 million. And if you can't transfer these to your customers, and a lot of them can buy from other parts in the world where the natural gas isn't that expensive, that's the tricky pony there. That's a very, very tricky pony. And everything looks really good, net income, everything strong, the company, but the free cash flows, okay, they will manage it over time. They still look great here on the long term, 4 billion in free cash flows, great net income. If you compare it to the market cap, 10% free cash flow yield, paid out as a dividend, great assets. But it is the issue they have invested in something in Russia that is, of course, going to zero. They have assumptions that are a little bit exuberant for the year. Of course, they show a good balance sheet, but still, that has gone higher 20 billion so half the market cap already and you can see here how okay it looks good but we have to see how the input costs will hit them over time they accept growth ahead and they have huge huge capital investments ahead they plan to do some buybacks 1.5 billion per year plus the dividend increase it over time but look at these capital expenditures of course investing also in china but this will only materialize by 2026 when it starts working so it is actually a macro play on europe and if the euro weakens the cost will keep going higher and that's also something that you have to see okay this is the industry they are trying to diversify but now you are diversifying with the weaker euro with higher borrowing costs it's easy to diversify if you can borrow a strong euro at zero interest rate at higher interest rates now with the weaker euro the whole game for the european industry changes so again a lot of risk keep that in mind and let's now look at what what's going on continental looks interesting good but difficult business the sector is difficult great business except the price no miracles, dividend, Philips, I really don't see it. Looks way better, still a little bit expensive, just a bet, boring business, looks good by mind the risk and stock exchange, a little bit expensive, but okay. And then input costs booming, that might really put some pressure on this historical company. Keep in mind, historical companies also go bust. Now, for the 1 million euro question, what would I buy here if I really, really must? I must say for my disclaimer that Europe still looks really, really expensive. And that's also why I did this exercise. Okay, what's going on in Europe? Interest rates are still very, very low. So one has to think, okay, if those interest rates go higher, as it was the case in the US or weakness or euro or everything, prices can go much, much lower. That's the thing. If I had a million euros here, what would I do? Oof, that's a good question. So Vonovia, dividend, if they can just keep the dividend, that's something. Unilever is something. Vopac is also something. So that would be if I must put into something. BASF is more of a macro bet too expensive a little bit, just a bet on scale. So interesting businesses, but nothing, nothing that spectacular that I would say, okay, let me put something in and uh, hope for the best. It's really whatever I, wherever I would put this, it's just hoping for the best. I'm sorry for such a bad conclusion, but I don't see it. 
really tell me in the comments if there is something that I'm missing. Of course, risk and reward, everything can happen. Europe can have a booming year, do better than the US over the next two years. That can also happen and all the stocks can rebound. But there is also the risk that ugly is coming ahead. Check what I do here. Thanks for watching. We'll continue with these overviews, learning about businesses, which is the core and fundamental process of investing.